that's good. Okay, Andreas, all over to you. Um, awesome. Yeah, yeah so. Just my, is it cool if I leave my camera off? Everyone okay with that? Yes. Is that okay, or should I put it on? All right, awesome. Guys, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules. You know, it's a liquor lunch hour. I'm not sure what the weather's like where you are, um, but um, welcome to welcome to the Natural Farmer series. All right, we're starting off with episode one, and you know, just putting this whole thing together was um, it took a couple of weeks to get everything together and see how we're gonna introduce um, uh, this, this holistic organic agricultural approach and teach people also how to build soil fertility. Um, I'm also very new to this. I'm learning a lot from Sean every single day. Um, so I, I met, Sean last, met Sean last year. We got into a couple of conversations. Um, we, hopped onto, we, hopped, uh, we hopped onto this thing together um, with a couple, with, a, with two other partners, Brother Lady and Justice. And um, we, we, we tried to just introduce something new that everyone can, can learn from and, and also grow from as times are changing. Sean has built up a, a, mass, a massive, massive network in South Africa. Um, he's, 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 put, he's put up over 470 gardens in South Africa from the organic starter kit, which I'll tell you a bit more about uh, a bit later. Um, and wow, he's just, he's just, he's just a, a wise, wise guy. All right. He's very serious, very assertive, but um, also can chuck a good laugh if, you, if, you're, if you're good with your work too. So they're doing some epic things in South Africa. 95% uh, success rate with the uh, 470 gardens and taking deeper into understanding of your soil and a holistic approach to uh, orga um, organic agriculture. So today we have two exciting in-house industry experts. So that's Sean Kearns and Vaughan Wilkinson all the way from Cape Town and representing Sea to Harvest Africa. As Jessica Kaimu would say from NBC, we are live. Sean, take it away. Wow, thank you, Andreas. Thank you for that wonderful and, uh, you know, just really blowing my horn here. But no, good. Thank you so much. I think we all just try and we all um, really just uh, uh, got to want to contribute towards the sector and obviously uh, just really passionate about uh, organic agriculture and the whole holistic approach and those things. So basically, just to give you a bit of background um, as to why and how the natural farmer series um, uh, came about. Um, you know, we realized that there has been a growing concern, not just in South Africa, but in Africa. And there's been this uh, a wide talks about um, regenerative agriculture, organic ag 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 agriculture, um, looking at sustainability, circular economy. So all these hype and buzzwords. And, um, you know, we thought how better than to create a platform um, like the natural pharmacies where we could dialogue with these topics and uh, very contentious uh, subjects um you know and and then also basically um share on also the knowledge with industry experts and as well as being the founder of seed to harvest south africa um you know i have a wealth of knowledge around organic agriculture being an, an organic farmer for four years um, you know, there's a saying that says that a man with an experience is never at the mercy with a man with an argument. Um, and I'm that man with that experience. Um, experience teaches us a host of things in life. And I think that's what the Natural Farmer Series is about. It's about teaching, it's educating, empowering, it's sustaining farmers, looking at alternative ways that we can farm. And and and, and with Seed to Harvest, we've created um, and partnered with various uh, input uh, uh, manufacturers um, as well to manufacture inputs that are relevant and that can help to build soil fertility. So the Natural Farmer series will be a host of um, uh, 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 episodes. Um, for one season, there'll be 12 episodes over the next uh, 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 three to six months. Um, we'll be ha having lots of topics and lots of uh, subjects around this. Um, everything will be recorded and then put onto our YouTube channel. Um, for your perusal later, because some of these things are just a little bit, you know, sometimes over the top to, to be able to comprehend and to grasp immediately. So watching your own time, share it with other people as well. Um, yes, yeah, so we're just happy and thank you for your support today in joining us on this pharma series. Um, and we are hoping to take this to radio and take this to TV as well. 
um, that's what our vision is at, at Seed to Harvest, um, you know, bringing growth in agri. And that is what we are here for. So without delay, we have an amazing guest speaker to today, um, Vaughan Wilkinson, as he has been introduced. Um, Vaughan is from um, the University of Stellenbosch, uh, Molecular Biology. And Vaughan will take you through the program today, a session. There'll be 15 minutes slot and then this Q&A that we'll be able to um, have with Vaughan uh, around what has been discussed. I will take you on the holistic approach to organic farming. It's about five minutes I'm sharing around our concept, our ideology, and our theory um, at Seed to Harvest and, and, and how it has been linked to our success and Q&A. And Andreas will then come in and end off um, just with um, some testimonies of our products being used, not just in South Africa, but in Namibia as well. Um, and we'll also then just show, share with you um, our, our very well-known and uh, innovative concept, the Organic Garden Starter Kit, and what that's all about. And then we really look forward to seeing you next time. Um, if you haven't put your name down on our on our list, um, please drop an email to the natural farm at seedforharvest.co.za, send your details, put on the database so we can mail you, keep you updated. And then also there'll be amazing promotions only for those who are signed up with us on our products, on our inputs and those things that you can buy at amazing reduced costs because it's all about bringing growth in agri. So without further ado, Vaughan Wilkinson, welcome to this platform. Thank you once again for availing your time. And um, it's now over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Sean. Um, greetings, everybody. I'm very pleased to be able to see so many faces here and uh, the willingness to engage with natural farming and a new and hopefully more sustainable way to farm as well as for humans to interact with the environment and the ecology that's around it. So today I will be presenting a short introduction to soil health diagnostics and management with an eye on building and sustaining productive soils. So I am from a small company here in Cape Town, local Cape Roots, and I am partnering with the Sea to Harvest to present this section. And on our journey to remediating soils and seeing how the people of the Cape, as well as specifically the Cape Flats, are busy cultivating the lands in the Philippine environment, as well as utilizing natural resources, such as the nearby aquifer, as well as the organic matter that is in the soil, as well as the unseen fraction, which is the microbiome of the soil that is there. This is something that has fascinated us and really driven us to take a look at why natural farming is such an innovative, as well as historical approach to work the land in a way that generations ahead of you will still be able to do the same and reap the same beauty and bounty from the soil. So getting into the content <laughs> of, of this year presentation, we are trying to understand what soil is as a system. Because for such a long period of time, human civilizations have utilized soils without realizing the great fulcrum, the, the pivotal point that it is on sustaining what we have, what we call society. If we look back historically at civilizations such as the ancient Egyptians in Egypt or all along the Nile Delta, who increased the salinity of their soil to the point that it was no longer able to bear crops that could maintain it their populations. If we look at ancient civilizations along the Indus River Valley, we'll see that they too started polluting their soils and took it for granted. So with that in mind, we need to remember that the functionality of the system is what maintains humans and what we consume to continue our very existence. With this, we need to think of the living soil as an ecosystem, something that's alive. And de depending on that is all the biological factors we see above the ground, 
the trees, the animals, as well as us humans. We always like to think of ourselves as a separate part of the environment, but in, in fact, we are a part of it. I need to realize this and make sure our activity in sustaining ourselves, agriculture, is something that we can continue to do in a way that does not harm our very existence and that of the planet around us. So with this in mind, the interactions between soil and all of the other components that we experience around us in terms of weather effects, in terms of our own interactions with the soil, all of these interactions make up an open system for soil, whereby inputs come in as well as go out through additive and removal effects in the environment. Now, these are classified as either geological, biological, hydrological, or meteorological. And uh, you can see on the slide some examples of what this would entail in a practical sense. So things such as mineral weathering, mineral formation, and sedimentation are natural processes that have occurred over thousands, hundreds of, hundreds of thousands to millions of years to create the soil structure that we'll be looking at later in this presentation. However, as we increase our interaction with the living environment, the soils, as we cultivate soils, as we allow livestock to graze upon them, as we set up our infrastructure for irrigation in order to grow in places where previously water availability limited agricultural land use, all of these inputs are also affecting this open system of the soil, which only has a limited capacity to handle these rapid fluctuations in its composition due to human activity over time. So because of this, we need to take a look at what creates soil and what sustains the structure of it that keeps it fertile and able to produce food. So with this, we need to identify the activities that cause these changes in the environment, as well as work out mitigation strategies and management strategies in order to balance our activities and make the footprint of human activity as small as possible. Uh, this would include our use of petrochemicals, both in the fertilizers that we produce, as well as the heavy machinery that we use in order to supply inputs to the farms, as well as wasteful ways in, in which we clear the land of organic matter and destroy the soil structure in order to make up for lost gains where otherwise more holistic approaches could have mitigated these problems altogether and in fact fed the ecosystem, the soil structure, so that it can sustain itself. So with this in mind, let us look at some of the physical properties of soil. So altogether, soil is made up of a large section that does not just encompass the top layer that we usually work when we, when we dig into the soil and we see a soil profile. Much lower below that, there are many other materials that over time add to the structure of soil through some of the mechanisms that I've mentioned previously, such as uh, the mineralogical wearing, as well as sediment deposits. That occurs from the bottom of the soil the, the, mineral form, the mineral formation and weathering, such as formation of clay particles over time, as well as the breakdown of rock material into the structures that form the, the soil. So all in all, were these inorganic minerals, the rock minerals, as well as the organic components, which come from the, the top biome above the soil, deposited down into it from plant inputs as well as animal inputs. In, in addition to water and air, these are the main components of soil. So the mixture of it 
the, the mineral and the organic components are pretty much homogenous in soil. When you look, take a look under the microscope and you are able to then see that there are a wide range of particles that have no distinct distribution. They are all just occurring in the matrix of the soil. And that in and of itself is going to become very important when considering how to maintain the structure of the soil that allows plants roots to penetrate the soil, as well as for nutrient uptake and water regulation in the soil to constantly provide an environment that not only supports the plant's root structure and the upper vegetative growth, but also the microbiome, the living component of the soil that, that we will get into later. So with this in mind, we also need to take note of the fact that air and water content, depending on our own activities, as well as weather and climate patterns, will change over the season. As uh, the rainfall comes in and soils get saturated with water, the structure, the, in, such as things like the water retention capacity, um, is saturated. There's a, the soil has its full of moisture, as well as the decrease in the air content in the soil um, with the displacing of the water, uh, displacing that, that air. So these things ch can change within an hour with a thunderstorm rolling in, but it is ideally the capacity of the soil to adapt to these changes that is our, the main focus practically for the farmer. So ideally, when you would ask somebody in a soil science lab to describe what a perfect soil is, they would usually say that a loamy topsoil or a clay loamy topsoil is what is perfect for them to see the most effective plant growth under ideal conditions. So generally speaking, this makes up a balance of 45% mineral content. So that is the sand, the salt, and the clay particles that we'll introduce later, as well as organic material, air content, and water, which, as you see on the slide, make up about half of it, half of the total volume uh, in this ideal soil. However, this ideal factor of being able to grow in a perfect soil is not something that the, the farmer, somebody that cultivates the land, will in, in a realistic world be, be familiar with because soils vary from within even a few hundred meters of each other. The structure of the soil can radically change based on the topography of the land. Um, this is evident in the diagram that is on the left-hand side. So with that, you can see a cross-section of the soil as it is affected by the deposition of minerals. So with a riverbank on the far right-hand side, you would have a deposit of minerals from, from downflow water which makes up a certain layer of the soil, and where the soil and the ground has eroded towards the high elevations inland, you will see varying layers of the soil. All of this is happening within a very small region of space. So with that in mind, the farmer always needs to adapt to the conditions that present themselves to them. And with that, amend the soil and practice management techniques that will best keep the structure of the soil intact. So taking a look at what the soil structure consists of, what exactly is the, the soil made up of? So the matrix of the soil, which I previously mentioned in that 45% component, that major component, are the mineralogical constituents that came from the base rock, the rock formation 
underneath the subsoil layer over time as it weathered down. So depending on locations as well as environment conditions, the chemical comp composition of these soils vary, as well as the ratio in which the main constituents of the soil occur in vary. So all of these variabilities will result in different physical properties, such as texture, structure of the soil, its chemical properties, such as pH, as well as the cations that are present and can be held onto in the soil. So with that, we can also know that soil can be classified by various horizons, which are distinct bands within the soil that can be identified as you move downwards. So the main soil horizon on top would have a specific structure that we'll get into the composition of, underneath which would be the subsoil layer, as well as the, the rock formation down below. However, the component in which we are interested in occurs within the topsoil and directly beneath it. And that is consistent of sand, salt, and clay, which each have varying particle size, as you can see on the slide, compared to gravel, which is quite large and very easily visible uh, with a naked eye. Uh, on this next slide with the soil structure, you can see this, um, this very distinct profile of the soil when you cut away at it. And with that, you can see on the left-hand side of the image, the tropical rainforest. This is an image that was taken in the Amazonian basin in Brazil. So this shows the, the usually poor nutrient leaching soils. They're very prone to leach nutrients. And with that, the above ground crops, the, the trees need to maintain a very thick leaf litter to balance that, that mineral loss. However, on the right hand side, in the same area, we will have another soil to which organic matter as well as components that would hold the soil structure in place, those can be seen to the right. And this is known as terra preta, if you were wondering. This is something that the ancient Amazonian cultures, the agricultural civilizations, they amended their soils in order to be able to consistently produce edible crops on these soils. So with this in mind, we need to see that by building a soil structure that can play a host to an ecosystem of micro and macro organisms. So that includes fungi, bacteria, protozoa, nematodes, um, the insects, as well as the larger burrowing creatures, uh, such as moles, and also the in in fields, the creatures that burrow into the soil. So this can also include even pests, such as uh, snakes, some rodents that also do have burrows. All of these interactions will alter the soil structure, but also support the ability for soil to maintain itself. So with that, soil isn't just dirt. It isn't just some some medium that is inert. It's a living ecosystem that needs to be sustained in order for it to sustain, sustain us through crop cultivation. If we take a look at soil texture, which is the defining property that looks at the relationship between the clay, salt, and sand particles, we see that this is the property of the soil that determines how the growing medium, if you want to put it, for your crops will be able to support life. So that will determine how well the roots will pen penetrate, that will determine how well the soil can hold on to moisture, its capillary action, how well it is able to resist gravity's flow to leach nutrients down 
into the subsoil, and that in turn is going to influence how a farmer interacts with their soil and how they would select their crops as well as choose their fertilizer regimes and types in order to maintain soil structure. So the texture of the soil can fall within a large range, as you see on the texture chart on the top left-hand side. So some, you'll, you'll notice that right in the middle, there is the clay loam and directly beneath that is the loam soil, the ideal that we've described previously. However, um, take for example, right here in the Western Cape, where we have very sandy soils that are prone to, to nutrient leaching. Uh, those sorts of soils are ones in which you can't practically on a large scale try to import clay particles or import salt particles in order to change your soil into this ideal type. So therefore, by understanding the soil, we can understand how we need to mitigate against these, these factors in soils that have varying properties. So the time periods, as I just mentioned on a practicality standpoint, the time periods of weathering that transforms large soil particles as well as that rock formation in the subsoil and under the subsoil where clay minerals are also formed. This takes an extremely long time. It's far longer than any human lifetime. So this is exactly why we see that texture is most important when looking at how to, how to maintain soils over long periods of time, so, well, in human aspects for that regard. So the soil structure and the organic matter, which can be altered, is where you will take a look. Uh, so here I just have some general descriptions of what exactly those particles are defined as, how you would view them under a microscope and see or with a naked eye as in the in the example of sand, you'd look at that and see how to identify these particles. But that is also something that can be determined, and I would specifically recommend determining this through a soil analysis test. There is no, I would believe, more powerful tool than a soil analysis test for a farmer in order to understand how their soil is going to support their agricultural enterprise because that is going to tell them exactly how the irrigation would take place, how they would apply fertilizers as well as their crop selections. Generally speaking, the properties of these soil particles are water holding capacity, their capillarity, their infiltration rate, their cohesion and plasticity, their heating ability, their aeration and gas exchange capacity, and the cation adsorption capacity. So each of these explains how well the soil is able to hold onto water, how well water is drawn up from the particles of the soil into the soil structure over time as it loses and gains water, how quickly water penetrates the soil, how well the soil holds onto its own particles and keeps its form, how quickly it is heated, how, and how long it holds onto that heat. The aeration and gas, gas, gaseous exchange in the soil, so how well soil is able to transfer gases between itself as well as provide oxygen to the roots of the plant, and then how well the soil can hold onto minerals, mineral components. So how well that adsorbs to the soil. And if that is low, it will leach out to the soil. So with that, there is no, there's no single soil structure for which you can work out a mitigation strategy because each of these soils form part of 
the, the soil structure. There is a very diverse mix of these blends that you can only reveal through a soil test. However, practically, we can take a look at certain soil management practices for sandy soils. We will look at their low nutrient retention and holding capacity, and we will add organic matter. We'll do mulching. We'll make sure that we prevent erosion in the soil, and we will supplement where needed with mineral fertilizers in order to make up for nutrient loss. With clay soils, the high water retention, but the low water infiltration rate also results in low aeration and gaseous exchange. So telling to improve the soil structure as well as once more incorporating organic matter to improve the soil structure and support the microbiome is very important, as well as mulching, adding all that organic matter. With salt soils, infiltration rate is a problem, and it seems that there is this principle of adding organic matter into the soil that shines through. And this is also true here, as well as to add diversity to crop rotation. Um, this organic matter is truly the one thing that supports the soil macro and microorganisms and consistently aids in the decomposition of this organic matter into the soil that will support both the ability of soil to hold onto its nutrients as well as to hold onto water and maintain good um, porosity. Um, this is just a quick overview of how humus formation in soil occurs. You will be able to see uh, that this takes a very long time and really requires microbials, microbial matter to be in the soil, to have those microbiomes in the soil to, to support this, this entire formation process. Uh, the soil ecosystem is therefore the most important one of which bacteria and fungi form the most dominant part and due to the fact that they decompose plant organic material and cycle nutrients. They are pretty much at the top of the list of organisms you'd want to support within the soils. So with this in mind, there is a well-defined food chain within the soil structure, whereby the most, I would say the base of it is the saprophytic organisms, the ones that break down organic matter and feed it up the food chain to the other organisms that consume these broken down components. This is how soil thrives and is able to maintain its structure and resist the, the, the toil of agricultural applications. So this is all of the heavy equipment that rolls through the fields that can compact it and can decrease air porosity of water retention as well as water penetration. We take a look at the salinity increase of soils when adding mineral compounds. And all of these things by having a soil structure that supports an ecosystem this ecosystem will in turn support the soils and mitigate all of the abuse we put it through. Um, so an overview of the soil ecosystem would be those unseen microflora, the very small components, such as the bacteria, fungi, actinomycetes, as well as algae, which is often introduced through runoff of agricultural, um, agricultural supplies of water into fields. Uh, so this is also something that should be noted as well as algal blooms in that. Then in soil fauna, what we see as the animals in the soil, uh, these are nematodes, which are also viewed under microscope, but also earthworms and ants and termites who all, all in their own way would add to the process of decomposition of organic material and the cycling of nutrients, the degradation of the soil in, a, the de, sorry, the degradation of plant material into the soil through earthworms that burrow through it, through all of the animals and critters, as you, as you can call them, that are in a soil ecosystem. 
as well as the network of mycorrhizae and the fungal hypha, which are the network structure of fungi that spread throughout the soil, and specifically the mycorrhizae that are a cross of these fungi, which form an interaction, a symbiotic one, with plants either inside or outside of their root systems, uh, endo or ectomycorrhizae. And this in and of itself is a reason to support that soil ecosystem by being able to directly support your plants through this micro partnership. So with that in mind, I would like to have convinced you if you had previously thought perhaps of a soil as dead under the ground. Um, I, I do hope that this is something that the community by and large, not only farmers, but also somebody in their back garden that wants to grow something, that wants to learn where their food comes from and how they sustain themselves, how the world around them, the interactions they have around themselves are sustained. This is something that I hope a sort of venture like this and, and this natural form presentation it will be able to bring that about and make individuals realize the wonders of the soils that is underfoot. Uh, thank you so much for your attention, uh, everybody. Uh, that concludes the presentation. Okay, thank you so much, Vaughan. We'll have a few minutes for um, some questions and answers before we move to a short five minute uh, ending of concluding presentation. So um, if you have any questions for uh, Vaughan now, please do so, unmute your mic or put your hand up if you can, and then you can go. So um, it's open for next few minutes. Thanks. Well, you know what they say, well, you know what they say, um, if there's no questions, then the presenter did quite an amazing job um, and has articulated himself amazing. So without further ado, thank you so much, Vaughan. Um, I think that we- Thank you very much, Vaughan. We've really uh, done an amazing um, job around this. And um, yeah, so I just want to basically thank you for this and thank you for your insightful um, uh, 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 wisdom and knowledge around the subject, which really takes me to, um, you know, kind of ties in very well with what I'm about to share. So we're looking at, you know, what Vaughan has spoken about has really been amazing. And it's something that everybody needs to know, whether you're a backyard farmer, household gardener, community farmer, commercial farmer, small scale farmer, the soil is a living organism. I love to make the statement, birds have feathers, Fish have scales, humans have skin, the soil needs to be covered. Come on now. So basically, um, and part of what the soil does is that it enhances the growth of the plants. So whatever happens at the on top is a result of what is happening below the soil. Um, and before I just go into the whole holistic approach, I want to just share um, uh, some principles of organic agriculture on a general level because, you know, organic agriculture is, is a misnomer and, and, and many people misinterpret organic ag agriculture. And I've just highlighted a few general principles and, um, uh, and also uh, some practical principles um, as well. So on a general level, organic agriculture improves and maintains the natural landscape and the agro ecosystem. Um, it avoids over-exploitation and pollution of natural resources. It minimizes consumption of renewable uh, energy and resources. It produces sufficient quantities of nutritious, wholesome, and high-quality food. It provides an adequate return um, within a safe, secure, and healthy working environment. And we know that it also acknowledges um, some indigenous insight um, you know, and, 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 and knowledge to traditional farming systems that was long uh, uh, in existence before this whole move of organic. And we see it in, in Africa, in our, in our rural areas, 
in, 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 you know, in the Eastern Cape in South Africa, there's many farmers in the North of Africa in this, you know, uh, you find that traditional farming systems are still in place. And on a practical level, organic agriculture maintains and increases the long-term fertility of the soil. And, you know, it enhances the biological cycles within the farm, especially one important thing, nutrient cycles. It provides nitrogen by intensive use of nitrogen fixing plants. And I'll share a bit more now um, on the two slides um, as to how even the biological plant protection based on prevention instead of curing, you know, and that's what organic agriculture leans towards preventing, you know, than curing. And, 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 and organic ag agriculture on a practical level um, has a diversity of crop varieties, animal species appropriate to the local conditions um, of that community, animal husbandry appropriate to the needs of the animals. Um, you know, on a practical level, it's a ban on synthetic chemical fertilizers, plant protection, hormones, and growth regulators. We need to move to more natural plant protection, natural hormones, natural growth um, re regulators. It's a prohibition on genetic um, engineering on GMO um, and its products. You know, it's a ban on synthetic and harmful methods, for, um, you know, which basically is processing and, um, and ingredients in the food uh, 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 system. So looking at the, the whole paradigm, and I think organic agriculture is a paradigm shift because when you look at this, it's not your norm. Um, and so we need to unlearn a lot of things that we've learned to go back to the ways of old. So when you look at my drawing, okay, I'm going to just shut my video for a second um, so you can see the whole screen. So when you look at the drawing that I've done over here, you find that the tall plant on your left and your right is the dominant plant. This is the crop that you're growing, whether it's cabbage, spinach, millies, maize, whatever you're growing, that's the dominant crop, okay? So, and then the ones in between, as you can see, it says root companions on as diverse as possible. So what it is that in between these dominant crops, we were always taught to pull out the weeds and clean the weeds and the rows have to be clear. Now, I beg to differ because what this is, it's called dynamic accumulators. It is basically creating, and like Bourne was saying, and I allude back to it, is that the soil is a living organism. So, so what do we need to do? We need to basically always, there should always be living roots in the majority because we do know according to many scientific journals, and I'm happy to share with you, please drop us a mail, um, is that roots fertilize the soil. Microbes feed the plants. And we're going to go into more detail about this concept and this type of, of, of farming system um, in, the, in the weeks to come, where we will particularly deal um, around microbial activity in plants, the endocytes of how the bacteria and the fungi in the soil actually feeds off your organic matter in your soil as food and takes it into the root hair and feeds it. I like to say that plants eat meat. Um, you know, there's many vegetarians that says, oh, I'm a vegetarian, I don't eat meat. But plants eat meat. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, so basically, you know, the total mass of living matter in your soil dictates the plant growth volume above. So what can we deduce? That plants have an influence on soil. It affects the soil life. So the plant residues. So, you know, those weeds, so look at in between the two trees or the crops that you're growing. In between, you've got your little weeds. they green, nice ones. Um, so that's your weeds that's growing, or it could be a, 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 a biomass, a, a cover crop that you've planted for living roots, okay? Um, and what do you do? Before they flower, or if it goes, if it grows um, uh, above the dominant plant crop, all you got to do is flatten it or cut it down from time to time. So when you cut it down, it's green. It's green. So, you know, there's a concept of green manuring where you grow various types of seed 
varieties as a green manure, harvest it and use it um, in your farming operation. In this case, we are saying, um, don't just create um, a compost heap, but create a compost stack. Now, the, we'll share more about the compost stack, um, hopefully in our next session. So we really want to come back, um, you know, and, 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 and find out what it, what's the difference between a compost heap and a compost stack. So a compost stack is that where you basically looking at a soil starter. On the right hand side, we apply activated biochar into the soil. We know that charcoal has an, an immense, amazing property of storing, um, uh, storing nutrients, uh, surface area, storing water. So putting biochar into it. Um, we will have biochar available soon because many people don't know where to get it, how to make it. Um, and, and, and this will be available soon um, in South Africa and Namibia. So stay tuned and be on our list so that you can be uh, informed on availabilities of innovative and new things that are coming out. Apply compost layer to the soil. So you can see the black layer. So you have the main plant and you see the little black little crosses in the bottom. That is your mulch or your diverse um, chippings of different plant material that's been chopped up and chipped up. So you never mix it into the soil. You put it above the soil. So the minute you have your dynamic accumulators growing above that there, you cut that down and you have a green layer on top of the brown layer. And we know what is the, the formula to manufacture compost. Can anybody tell me from the panel and from our guest today, what are the two main ingredients to manufacturing compost? Um, can you, is anyone out there? Anyone can guess? Okay, no one wants to guess today, but I'll tell you it's carbon and nitrogen. Anything that is decomposed and brown is carbon. Anything that's green and alive has a high content of nitrogen. So can you see what we are saying? We are saying that above your soil level, put down mulch, create a natural composting layer above the soil. And that then breaks down. And as you water, it also makes a tea which washes down fungi, bacteria into the soil and into the roots, which actually we know that the microbes feeds the plants and these organic matter needs to feed the microbes. So that is how you would start your soil. We know that there is a reality of assisted, which is out there where unfortunately if your soil has been depleted of these minerals, there is a list of allowed inputs, um, substances as listed in the mixture of organic norms. We have the SABS um, organic standard. Um, there's different regulations that will guide you as to what you can use um, in organic agricultural farming more sustainably, naturally, in harmony with nature. But you know, in the ideal world, you find that there are inputs that you might have to put in before you start farming uh, and growing this way. And that'll be like your proteins, your animal res um, residues meal, um, your kelp flakes, your kelp meal, um, you know, your composted animal dung, the guano powder, you know, putting that sort of things into the soil, um, you know, the amino acids. And, and we've got that available at Seed to Harvest. We've got a range of products from kelp flakes to biostimulants. Um, we've got the guano powder available, uh, readily available in Namibia. We've got the liquid in South Africa, you know. Um, then there is basically, Vona speaking about clay soils, you know, lime, adding lime to your clay soils, which is a living mortar. Uh, it's a mortar in, in clay soils. So it stretches this mortar and the lime allows the clay to actually start creating more, become more porous and helps it to breathe and, and, and reduces compaction. And then obviously phosphor, you know, on only on soils that are very poor in phosphor, you'll need to add phosphor in it. There are natural forms of phosphor, rock phosphate that you can basically um, add in the soil as well. So this is basically our idea and our concept of, um, uh, you know, an holistic approach to um, organic agriculture. Um, and this is in conclusion, you know, looking at all of this as what, like trying to make sense of how do I actually build soil fertility? What do I use? How do I get this thing going? What is the challenges? You know, I'm facing so much things. And I want to tell you something that your plant health is determined, will determine how many insects you have and your soil health 
will determine how many weeds you have. So increase the soil, the plant increases, weed pressure drops, and the insect population decreases. So what we put together is that um, sustainable farming, organic agriculture, regenerative ag agriculture is all about monitoring, 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 monitoring. Monitor the weather, monitor your microclimate, monitor the moisture, both with data collection. Um, Cito Harvest will soon be rolling out its um, uh, water data collection devices. Um, there's exciting new things coming soon that you can manage your water consumption, especially like in Namibia, the south of, Nam of Namibia, where it's so dry and water is a commodity, you know. Um, so that is important that you monitor. So this type of farming, it's more service driven than input driven because you kind of use inputs to build soil fertility to not use it in five and 10 years time as you build or three years, depending what uh, soil fertility practices you are, you are doing. You know, uh, again, monitor your soil fauna, the compost health, monitor the soil structure, you know, building your soil towards a humus, you know, how do you do that? Um, we know that Calplex is one of the most amazing additives to soil uh, in building humus because it's an alginate. It feeds the microbes. It's full of amino acids, um, you know. And as you see top left corner, the companion's root triangle. So we said that create a living root in your soil. The top left companion root triangle should fit into the top third of the dominant crop plant root triangle dynamic accumulators should really be few. Dynamic accumulators, meaning what you're adding into the soil. So the more roots, the more uh, biomass you're getting into the soil, the more you're covering your soil, putting a compost layer, you then start building soil fertility, allowing the soil to regenerate itself and restore itself from various chemicals and you know whatever has been put into it, deplete the fertility. One of the other things is that how do you get a highest possible bricks. Now, bricks is your carbohydrate content in your plant. You know, when you eat, when you eat the orange, you open up an orange, that juiciness out of it. I mean, how many of you have ever eaten an orange where you open up and it's as dry as the sand? There's no juice hardly in it. Um, it has a, a very low brick. So the, the bricks of a plant is very important. So how do you do that? You apply vitalizers, you apply soil immunizers, growth stimulators, we have a host of uh, uh, products on range as well as growth stimulators. Our 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 kelp uh, suspension we have. We 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 we've got a moringa biostimulant, which really works with the auxins and the cytokinins. Um, you know, and 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 basically that helps you to kind of boost the stimulant of the plant and helping it to grow through this. And we know that plant growth stimulant should be applied according to BRICS measurements. So after harvest applications are, are critical for the best root volume improvements. We then also looked at direct sun rays should reach the bottom of the dominant crop. You know, at least three hours after sunrise and three hours before sundown. The height of the companions that's growing in between, and that's the middle drawing in there, should not reach two thirds of the dominant crop. The minute it reached two thirds, it must be cut down because at the bottom of the plant can reach that sunlight and decomposes natural compost stack. So the companion should be flattened from time to time to improve the microclimate and decrease disease attacks. Now, there's a host of insecticides that we have available that contributes to building soil fertility and working in harmony with nature. We have neem oil, we have exterminator, which is basically a citrus-based oil. We have a bio-insect, as Vaughn was speaking about fungi. We use a fungi approach um, in the bio-insect uh, uh, Bavaria bassiana strain that we use various strains of, 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 of funguses as insecticides. So we take out nature, we take out these harmful pests um, with, um, you know, its own kind, a stronger dominant fungus and those things. We have uh, uh, various fungicides available. Unfortunately, copper and sulfur you can, you can find uh, 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 anywhere around, but we've got an AQSA4 powdery mildew. We have trichoderma, which is a natural fungicide, a natural bacteria found in the soil, which can reduce the soil borne diseases. Um, so really in closing, I would like to say that your landscape design of your garden should integrate aisles or forests that harbor beneficial predators 
to stop attacking insects. And these should basically be linked um, by corridors used by predators to roam the full area of cultivation. So never just plant one open field, create corridors, create aisles of um, companion planting, uh, plant up, um, you know, your, 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 your uh, uh, stink Africanas, uh, marigolds, um, various types of uh, uh, smelly plants that will attract your, your, your preys, you know, I mean, attack the good bugs that will attack these things that want to kill your plants, you know, get more ladybugs into your garden. The more ladybugs, the more wasps we get into it, you know, I think that um, that will help with efforts. So using a biological approach, but without further ado, thank you so much. That's all for me for now. This is just to be an overview. We're going to be delving deeper into um, growth stimulants, insecticides, fungicides, dealing with more um, pest control, integrated pest management, focusing on various diseases, how you can deal with it. You know, um, so please don't miss our next couple of shows. Really, um, we, 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 um, it's going to be exciting. Uh, 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 we'll be taking this and from time to time having uh, really amazing uh, uh, guests like um, Vaughn and other topics um, that we're basically going to be sharing on. So thank you so much, Andreas. It's all over to you. Um, yeah. I think Andreas is shocked by the amazing feedback. Okay, Andreas, are you there? Oh, is there any questions and answers before I give over to Andreas? Any questions and answers um, that we might have? Um, any questions and answers from anybody around uh, this thinking? Yes. Yes, I have a question. Yes, Aina, you may go. Yes, I, I don't know if I missed it, but sorry if I'm taking you back to something you have already mentioned. It's about the exterminator. Um, I have uh, the good worms and the nematodes in my uh, garden. Um, can the exterminator also just eliminate the worms or it's just the bad one? Um, okay, so 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 if you've got nematodes in your soil, remember nematodes are good, but sometimes in your soil, Aina, that you do find mm -hmm. that the population of bad nematodes are, um, are, are, are just overwhelming. So I would recommend we've got something called, um, uh, 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 we've got a nematode application that you can use with the exterminator and our, and our neem oil which needs to be used in conjunction because it should suppress the nematode um, count in your soil um, unless you do a full soil um, a test, which um, where about in Namibia are you based? Uh, I'm in Vindu and, and, and my, my carrots are eaten up completely. Okay, so I would suggest, I would suggest that you make contact with Andreas. We've got a nematode um, a formula that you can use and spray it's very successful and we're happy to put a program in place with you to help you to improve that but there's obviously it's not just a nematode so we've got to work and as you've heard with Vaughn and myself there's a lot of other things you need to do getting other planting roots in the soil don't turn and those things so Andreas will definitely make contact with you Aina um, I'm sure you okay. are well uh, versed with him and he can send you just tell him um, how big your plot is and we can put together a prescription for you to spray onto your soil. Um, and preferably, I think it's amazing now because it's rainy season in Bintuk, um, in Namibia. So it's the best time mm -hmm. now to apply these biological inputs because the more water you, the water is only the carrier. You need to wash it into the soil. So it's the best time to apply it is when it's raining. And please know all of these um, biological products will not affect or infect and, 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 and your water supply, um, um, you know, because it is natural um, and it's a basically a, a fungi that uh, a biological approach. Okay. Any other question? Uh, 
Okay, so, well, that is good. Thank you for that. Um, I will now hand over to uh, my esteemed colleague, my esteemed colleague, Andreas Nakanyala. All over to you. Oh, thank you so much, Sean. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you guys have, have heard quite, quite a bit about um, the building your soil fertility and the holistic cultural approach. And, you know, you, you're probably now thinking to yourself that, you know, the soul is a lot more dynamic than what it actually looks like, <laughs> and which is actually the truth. And, it, and, and that the soil, the soil and the plants also have friends, you know, at the root companions and such, and the different levels, levels to the, the, to the soils, and obviously different applications you can use, you can use. And, you know, in fact, we've actually, we've actually been, we've actually been playing around with, not just playing around, but I mean, it's, it, it works. You know the bio, the bio name as well, and I'm gonna touch, I'm gonna touch a bit on that, and then just very quickly on to what we have, what we have as a starter kit, which encompasses most of the most of the products that we do have. Um, to start off with, to get you going, if you like to start the garden, I spoke to someone today, he said he's getting his garden prepared. I said, cool, this is basically what you'll need. It gives you your 12 sets of seeds, your heirloom seeds, and uh, it gives you your insecticide, your 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 fungicide, your your organic fertilizer. Um, and these are all in, in, in high concentration, which you just mix in with water and spray over your spray over your garden, spray over your plants. Um, gives you your kelp flakes, which is which is really nutritious for your soil and also helps adjust your or, or balance your pH level over time. And then my personal favorite, I never leave the house without carrying this one, um, the hydrazole. Even if I don't have a starter kit with me in my bag. The hydrosorb is what I'm definitely carrying. And if you've met me in town, you know, I probably asked you for a glass of water and then I probably turned into a, into a gel, basically a power bank for your, for your plants. And we can share a lot more information with you about all these products as well. You know, just request with us, um, drop me an email. The, the details will be given to you after this as well. And then we can share a lot more with you. And if you'd like to place an order, we're ready to listen to you and also advise you if you need growing programs for to upscale because these aren't just a small this, this, this is just a small scale starter but we can definitely upscale and get you a bigger bigger set that you need if you're going 500 500, uh, 500 meters squared or one hectare depends on how how big you actually want to go with it maybe i was actually speaking now i have been to a been to a place she's got a beautiful garden um and but she was struggling with the with the chickens as well and i spoke to sean and we bounced back to our technical department and, and you know we had a, we had a chat about how what we can do for a chicken and a chicken were being bite, bitten by insects in the, in the pen um you know they, they started getting sores um so the technical department for, uh, in south africa they told us hey guys listen let's try and mix up um a mixture of bioneme right and water and then she could go ahead and then wash the chicken with it and that's exactly what she did the first picture that you see to that you see on your left hand side is the first picture she sent me when she was worried about the chicken um and then she sent a progressive picture as she was washing the chicken and as you can see the eyes are starting to open up on the chicken i was hoping these videos would play but they wouldn't play. But I, what I'll do is I will send I will send the videos into the group, and I've added everyone into the group, um, the natural farmer. But the left side there, you'll see the chicken is healthy now. I mean, she had a chicken dancing, and when I when I went to go and see her this time around, she actually said to me, you know, I didn't know what to do with them. She felt so bad with the chick for, for the chicken that she actually wanted to let them go. Um, so glad that she got to keep a chicken. She loves a chicken every time she, every time we go or to 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 a place to see her garden and check out her plants. Um, the chicken always feature. So the bioneme helped out there. The chicken are now dancing and they're all good. They're laying their eggs now as well again. And yeah, just grateful that we could actually out go out there and help her. And and grateful that she was actually trusting us to do this. Stop it off. We are we are basically based in in two countries right now. Zambia as well is popping on the map. Um, these are just our contact details for you guys if you'd like to get in touch. All right, in Namibia, you could drop us an email at info.namibia at seedharvest.co.za, and that's for your that's for your needs for your orders and such. In South Africa, info at seedharvest.co.za, and in Zambia, info.zambia at seedharvest.co.za. For for your requests on the natural farmer series. I've dropped the email there as well, the natural farmer at c 2 harvestcoza And you can also hop onto our website and check out what we do, you know, um, www.c2harvest.co.za. 
We also got two Facebook Facebook sites open, um, Seed to Harvest Namibia and Seed to Harvest South Africa. Seed to Harvest Zambia is also going to open up soon, but the contact details are there. Get in touch with us. We're very friendly, we're ready to help, and um, ready to give advice for where we can. But we can't help you, our technical department can. All right, and please stay tuned. Every second week, we will have the Natural Farmer Series. Thank you so much for everyone that was on episode one of season one episode one of the natural farmer series and what we're going to do for you guys is um for the for, for the next two weeks until the next episode we're going to offer a special i have marked down everyone that has registered uh, on the series and we are going to give you a chance to actually get the bioneme at less 15 percent of the cost of, of the cost price um that, we, that we're selling it to you guys too and yeah any needs please do kick us a message, drop us an email, give us a call. We're here to help. Great, Andreas, thank you for that. Thank you, everybody. Um, just to, 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 to remind you um, that uh, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will be posting all our sessions on YouTube as well. So you'll be more than happy to, you know, watch it again at your own leisure. Please invite people, share it around, um, tell people about this. Um, the more people we get growing organically, the better the world will be. Uh, climate change is a reality and we need to change the world one seed at a time. So go on to uh, YouTube, look for seed, the number two harvest, like, subscribe, and click the bell so that you can receive all our notifications first in your inbox. And um, we look forward to seeing you soon. And that'll be in two weeks time. Thank you once again. God bless you and have an awesome day. Bye for now. Bye, everybody. Bye bye. Cheers, cheers, guys. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye, bye, bye. bye. thank you. Pleasure. No, goodbye. <laughs> bye, Vaughn. Cheers, Vaughn. Cheers, Short. Cheers, Aina. Cheers, um, Quiet, Doro, Kiriad, Peli. Mamukaya. Who else is here? Who else is here? Peli, Dor Dora. Ben, just Ben. Ben is there still. Kirian Mamukaya. Joy. Joy Mamino. <laughs> Welcome, Joy Mamino. And we are done, Joy, but you can catch us um, live. Yeah. Um, on YouTube and those things. Thank you so much. We are now finished, but we will share the link of the YouTube channel um, and the video and you can watch it and get back and yeah. Thank you. Cheers everybody. Bye-bye.